The information depicted in this presentation is purely for informational purposes only. Please consult your healthcare professional before making any changes to your lifestyle or routine. This is not medical advice. I don't blame you if you've used cannabis or you've smoked cannabis in the past. That is entirely up to you. However, what I do want to present is a way to combat and protect the brain following cannabis exposure. What's up guys, my name is Lucas and my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please do me a favor, like this video, hit subscribe below. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below as I do my best to respond to each and every single one. So ultimately today I'm here to look at some potential strategies to counteract the damaging effects that cannabis has on cognitive function and specifically brain performance. So obviously this is not medical advice and I'm not someone who conducts or promotes the use of cannabis where it's illegal. All I'm doing here is presenting some potential strategies to offset the damaging effects of cannabis because I'm sure we all know that cannabis can lead to disrupted memory, it can hurt sleep performance, it can disrupt many other parameters associated with executive functioning. So ultimately, what I'll do is put forward some potential strategies to combat the damaging effects of cannabis. So first of all, we need to look at the cannabis plant or the hemp plant itself. And we need to first of all, have a look at the natural cannabinoids present within cannabis. Now, bear in mind, the human body has specific receptors that cannabis can bind to. These are known as the endocannabinoid receptors. Now we can see here the various natural cannabinoids. We have CBGA, we have THCA, we have just THC, which is what I'll be focusing on for this video and the damaging effects of this THC. We also have CBG, THCV, CBD, which I'm sure many of you have heard of, CBN, another cannabinoid, and then CBC. So the only other cannabinoid that I've spoken about on this channel is CBG. If you haven't already checked out that video, I definitely encourage you to have a look at its medicinal properties and how it can be beneficial. But ultimately I'm looking at how we can protect the brain against THC. Let's have a look at how THC can affect cognitive function and behavior. And it ultimately comes down to where the CB receptors are found within the brain and specifically where this THC is able to bind to. So we can see the different parts of the brain. We have the neocortex, the basal ganglia, the nucleus accumbens, the hypothalamus, the amygdala, hippocampus, spinal cord, brainstem, and cerebellum. What we can see here and what we know based off research studies is that THC can act and affect various regions within the brain. So starting with the amygdala, which regulates emotions, fear, and anxiety, THC can affect this region of the brain and actually promote you know, more panic associated behaviors or paranoia, which I'm sure many of you listening in who've either used cannabis in the past can probably relate to the paranoia that is um, experienced when smoking cannabis. In addition, we have the basal ganglia, which is responsible for planning and starting a movement. So THC can negatively affect movement patterns and it can actually impair reaction time, which is not beneficial for many uh, sports as you probably gather. Then we also have the brainstem, which regulates information between the brain and spinal column. Now, funnily enough, THC actually has anti-nausea effects which some would say is actually a benefit. Then we have the cerebellum, which affects motor coordination and balance. The net outcome is that THC can affect the cerebellum similar to alcohol and impair coordination. Then we have the hippocampus, which regulates uh, memory and learning new information. And unfortunately, THC can have a negative effect on consolidation of memory or consolidation of a new 
uh, topic or idea. Next, we have the hypothalamus, which regulates eating behaviors and sexual activity. Interestingly, THC can increase appetite. I'm sure many of you can relate to this, the classical munchies. And the neocortex, which affects complex thinking, feeling, and movement. And the effect that THC has here is that it can alter thinking behaviors or thinking activity, judgment, and sensation. And then we have the nucleus accumbens, which affects motivation and reward. And THC can increase the likelihood of euphoria, but unfortunately that can come with some dysphoria, which is the opposite of euphoria the following day. And that's pretty much it from how THC can damage cognition. So the very first cannabis protection molecule is called pregnenolone. If you have learned about hormones, you'll know that pregnenolone is the mother of all steroid hormones. You are producing it right now as you watch this. Pregnenolone is basically the very first hormone that's produced after you eat cholesterol or when we uh, consume cholesterol the very first substrate it goes down into is pregnenolone but pregnenolone can be used as a supplement and it is being used as a supplement for adrenal fatigue memory preservation for longevity but now we have evidence that shows that pregnenolone can protect the brain from cannabis intoxication now this study here looked at how pregnenolone being the inactive precursor of all steroid hormones can basically impact the activity or the activation of the cb1 receptor the cannabinoid one receptor pregnenolone acting as a signaling specific inhibitor of the cb1 receptor reduces several effects of thc now funnily enough thc can actually increase the synthesis of pregnenolone in the brain which is quite surprising and that may be a little bit confusing but we can see that this negative feedback mediated by pregnenolone reveals a previously unknown paracrine autocrine loop protecting the brain from cb1 receptor over activation that could open up an unforeseen approach for the treatment of cannabis intoxication and addiction so pregnenolone in addition to its ability to increase hormone levels we now see evidence that pregnenolone can protect the brain against cannabis intoxication so you will see a link to pregnenolone down in the video description below the next cannabis protection molecule is cdp choline or citicoline you can see the study here was titled citicoline treatment improves measures of impulsivity and task performance in chronic marijuana smokers a pilot bold fmri study so we can see the authors noted Citicoline is an endogenous nucleotide that is historically being used to treat stroke, traumatic brain injury, and cognitive dysfunction. As hypothesized, chronic marijuana smokers randomized to 2,000 milligrams of citicoline per day demonstrated significantly lower levels of behavioral impulsivity, improved task accuracy on two measures of inhibitory function, and exhibited a significantly different pattern of brain activation relative to those who received placebo. Taken together, these data demonstrate that administration of citicoline may reduce behavioral impulsivity, improve cognitive performance, specifically on measures of inhibitory control and improve neural processing in chronic heavy marijuana smokers after only a relatively brief treatment period. So CDP choline, you'll see in many supplements designed to improve cognition. You can use CDP choline on its own. You'll see a link to purchase CDP choline down below if you want to dabble with CDP choline. Um, I've used this compound hundreds of times in my career. I've used it to improve focus, improve memory. I like to stack it with Alcar and uridine as well. Now, the next cannabis protection molecule is glutathione. I'm sure many of you are familiar with glutathione, um, but if you're not, glutathione is the master antioxidant in the body. And we can see here in this study, oxidative stress produced by marijuana smoke an adverse effect enhanced by cannabinoids. And we can see that cannabis smoke exposure increases reactive oxygen species in a dose and time dependent manner. In contrast, exposure to smoke from marijuana containing 0% Delta 9 THC produced no increase in reactive oxygen species 
despite a 70% decline in glutathione levels. Smoke from marijuana containing 1.77% Delta 9 THC stimulated the intermediate levels of reactive oxygen species. A brief 30 minute exposure to marijuana smoke regardless of the Delta 9 THC content also induced necrotic cell death that increased steadily up to 48 hours of observation. So you will see a link to glutathione in the video description below. Glutathione is, remember, going to help to eliminate oxidative stress. It will also help to detoxify the body of heavy metals. And it's probably worth covering a separate video on the benefits of glutathione itself so you'll see that in the video description below hopefully you learned something new in this video again not encouraging the use of cannabis outside a medicinal setting if you have any questions leave them down below please do help to share my channel please if you like this video please share it around post it in some underground forums or um, some well-known reddit subreddit groups so thanks everyone for tuning in i look forward to seeing you in the next video